Are you tired of living paycheck to paycheck? If you are, then this video is for you. Today we're delving into how to stop living paycheck to paycheck. A significant proportion of individuals worldwide are trapped in this cycle, surviving from one paycheck to the next, just about staying afloat. This lifestyle can induce immense stress and unease, accompanied by the persistent feeling of always being a step behind, never quite taking a breather. But consider this, what if your reality could be different? What if there were viable steps that could lead you to break free from this cycle, to gain financial stability, and to live a life where your paycheck is not a lifeline, but a tool to forge a brighter future? This is exactly what we'll uncover in this video. We'll discuss key strategies that can assist you in leaving behind the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle and moving towards a financially secure and comfortable existence. Before we delve into the solutions, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to support the channel. Now, without further ado, let's get started. The first step to stop living from paycheck to paycheck is understanding the importance of budgeting. What is budgeting, you may ask? Well, budgeting is the art of managing your income and expenses. It's like a roadmap for your finances, guiding you to your financial destination. By creating a budget, you decide where your money goes instead of wondering where it went. Think of it this way. When you embark on a journey, you plan your route to reach your destination efficiently. Similarly, your money also needs a planned route, a budget, to ensure it reaches its intended destinations, such as rent or mortgage, groceries, savings, and other necessities. Budgeting is vital for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it helps you cover all your needs. When you have a budget, you're ensuring that every dollar you earn is assigned a task. You're saying, hey dollars, I worked hard for you. Now here's your job. This way, you can ensure that your needs are met before anything else. Secondly, Budgeting helps you avoid unnecessary expenses. It's like a financial mirror reflecting where your money is going. Sometimes you might be surprised to see how much you're spending on things you don't really need. It's like discovering a leak in your wallet and budgeting helps you patch it up. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, budgeting gives you control. Yes, you heard it right, control. With a budget, you're not just a spectator to your own financial life. You're the director. You get to decide what happens and when. But let's clear one thing up. A common misconception is that a budget is a financial straitjacket limiting your freedom. But that's far from the truth. A budget is not about restricting your spending. It's about understanding your spending and making informed decisions. Remember, a budget is not a restriction on your spending. It's a plan for your money ensuring it's going where it needs to. Next, we need to look at ways to cut back on expenses. Now this doesn't mean you have to live like a hermit, but it does involve making some smart choices. Let's dive into it. First, Consider reducing discretionary spending. These are expenses that are not essential, things like eating out, entertainment, and shopping for non-essentials. Instead of buying that new video game, how about inviting friends over for a game night with what you already have? Or instead of eating out, try preparing meals at home. You'll be surprised to see how much you save. Speaking of meals, cooking at home is a great way to cut back on expenses. Not only is it cheaper than eating out, but it's also healthier. Plus, there are countless easy-to-follow recipes available online for free. So, channel your inner chef and start experimenting in the kitchen. Next, let's talk about subscriptions. How many do you have and how often do you use them? Are you really watching all those streaming services or reading all those magazines? If not, it might be time to say goodbye. Eliminating unnecessary subscriptions can free up a significant amount of money each month. Also, look for ways to reduce your fixed expenses. This could mean switching to a cheaper phone plan, or maybe even downsizing your home. Remember, every little bit helps. Lastly, be conscious of your spending habits. It's easy to swipe a card without thinking about the impact on your budget. But being mindful of every dollar you spend can make a huge difference. Remember, the goal here is not to deprive yourself, but to make wise decisions with your money. The money saved from cutting back on these expenses can go a long way in breaking the paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck cycle. Having an emergency fund is an essential step to stop living paycheck to paycheck. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is an emergency fund? Well, it's a stash of money set aside to cover the financial surprises life throws your way. These unexpected events can be stressful and costly. Things like losing your job, an unexpected health issue, or an urgent car repair can throw you into financial turmoil. But here's the good news. Having an emergency fund can provide a safety net that keeps you afloat when these situations arise. It's a buffer between you and the unexpected. Think of it as your personal financial security guard, keeping watch over your money 24 sevenths. 
So, how much should be in your emergency fund? Well, a good rule of thumb is to have at least three to six months worth of living expenses saved up. Yes, it sounds like a lot, but remember, this is a goal you're working toward, not something you need to achieve overnight. You might be thinking, I'm barely making ends meet. How can I possibly save that much? It's a valid concern. But let's flip the script. Can you afford not to have an emergency fund? Without one, you're only one unexpected expense away from a financial crisis. So how do you start building this fund? Begin with what you can. It could be as little as $5 a week. The key is consistency. Make it a habit. Over time, these small contributions can grow into a substantial safety net. And remember, your emergency fund is for emergencies only. It's not for vacations, fancy dinners, or that shiny new gadget you've been eyeing. It's there to provide you with peace of mind, knowing that you're covered if a financial storm hits. So start today, even if it's with a small amount. Every little bit helps build that emergency fund. Finally, let's talk about paying off debt and increasing income. It's a big task, but remember, small steps can lead to big changes. When it comes to paying off debt, there are a few strategies that might work for you. The snowball method, for instance, suggests focusing on the smallest debt first, paying it off as quickly as possible, and then moving on to the next one. This approach can provide a psychological boost as you get to see debts disappear one by one. On the other hand, the avalanche method suggests tackling the debt with the highest interest rate first to save money in the long run. It's a more mathematical approach, and while you might not see results as quickly, you'll save more over time. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to debt. What matters is finding a strategy that works for you and sticking to it. Now, let's talk about increasing income. This could mean asking for a raise at your current job, something that might seem daunting but is often necessary. Remember, it's not just about demanding more money, it's about demonstrating your value to the company and making a compelling case for why you deserve it. Another option to increase your income is getting a part-time job. It can be an excellent way to bring in some extra cash, especially if you find something you enjoy doing. And let's not forget about the potential of a side hustle. This could be anything from freelance writing to selling handmade crafts online. The key is to find something you're passionate about and can do in your spare time turning your hobby into a source of income. Remember, the goal is not just to make more money, but to use that money wisely to break the cycle of living paycheck to paycheck. To wrap up, the key to stop living paycheck to paycheck is to be intentional with your money. It's about making deliberate choices that align with your financial goals. Let's quickly revisit what we've covered today. First, we talked about budgeting, the cornerstone of financial wellness. It's all about knowing where your money is going and deciding where it should go instead. We then dove into cutting back on expenses, which is part art, part science. It's about identifying the non-essentials, the luxuries that you can live without, and making the tough decisions to let them go. Next, we emphasize the importance of saving for emergencies because life is full of surprises, some less pleasant than others. Having a safety net can give you peace of mind and a buffer against life's unexpected events. And lastly, we discussed paying off debt and increasing income. These are the powerful accelerators that can propel you towards financial freedom faster than you might think. Take control of your financial future today. Remember, every small step counts. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. We'll see you in the next video.